Ladies and gentlemen, you are back on the Moser Report. And this week, a special week, uh, we did skip last week due to complete illness out of Vegas. So trying to do something a little special for you. I got a hold of the guys over at Stoke Lane Entertainment, and I managed to rustle up an interview with the one, the only, Brian Kibler, Minister of Misinformation and or Propaganda right there at Stone Lane Entertainment. Hey, Brian, how are you, sir? I'm doing great. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. And it is propaganda, I believe. Propaganda, so just, yeah. Yeah, I, I yeah. Think well, the or, information I provide is is entirely accurate. So. Oh, okay, okay. Well, there we go. We don't want, yeah, we don't really want it to be misinformation. But um, well, welcome to the show. Glad you could join us. Uh, great to be here. Awesome, awesome. And of course, uh, last time we spoke on air was uh, back at Gen Con last year, right? I still think during the Kickstarter. For yeah, that was that was you know sort of the beginning of uh, of our whole sort of Soul Forge creation process. So it's it's been quite the ride since then. I bet, yeah. We're, we're uh, 10 months into it, and of course things are going. Which brings me, we'll jump right into the first question. How goes so far development as a whole right now? What is the uh, buzz right there at the SBE offices? I mean, it's it's super exciting right now. You know, we, we were just able to uh, release uh, the deck builder on PC, as well mm -hmm. as open up uh, Soulforge to early access on Steam. So we've been able to really sort of get the game out in the wild and uh, get a whole bunch of new eyes onto it, not just our Kickstarter backers, but, you know, a, a big new audience coming in from Steam. Uh, and, you know, as, as a, you know, a TCG, uh, one of the, the really central features of a game like Soulforge is building your own decks, being able to sort of come up with what you want to do with your deck and, you know, make that a reality. And, uh, you know, up till now, players who've been in the beta for Soulforge have only really been able to play with pre-constructed decks. But now, with with the deck builder available, they can you know make all sorts of cool decks for, their, for themselves. Awesome, absolutely awesome. Because I know uh, I've played a little on Steam, still love it. Um, waiting though for uh, we'll get that to that in my my next question. But uh, waiting to jump in a little bit deeper, and of course waiting for some of that fun Kickstarter stuff. Of course, um, back into uh, the other question though, Android compatibility. What what kind of timeline are we looking for? Uh, right now, we're we're shooting to have uh, Android available at least in beta by the end of the year. Uh, we've been focused on getting the the PC and and iOS versions out the door, and uh, you know those should be uh, pretty much fully playable uh, within within the month by 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 sometime in August. Uh, so we're we're you know aiming to have the you know, tournament features, online play, uh, you know collection management, uh, you know booster packs, all that available uh, available sometime in August. Okay, wow, sometime in August. Now, will that be still the, the quick, peak, the extra, the early look, or will that be actual beta time? That will, that we're we're going to open it up uh, once we have sort of the, the main features of the game finalized, you know, uh, including, like I said, the, the booster packs and, and tournaments and, and everything. Uh, once, once we have that ready, we're going to open it up to an open beta. Uh, you know, still, still going to be in, in beta for a while, but, uh, you know, it's going to be pretty much the, the core features of the game. Very cool, very cool, and I know a lot of folks looking to dive in. As you said, I've even seen on my Facebook feed t folks talking about the uh, the deck builder um, and just this brews that they're they're going up, and people are already <laughs> screaming, "Okay, can you beat this brew? What what are you going to do to beat this?" So a lot of excitement on that, um, and really cool that we get to talk to you the same week that you're uh, you're putting all that out. Uh, speaking of actual gameplay, and I know obviously young know, designer and working doing these things. As you get to play, what are your two factions to kind of mash together and, and see what comes out? Uh, well, right now, probably my favorite faction to play with is uh, is Aloyan. Uh, there's all, all sorts of cool stuff that Aloyan gets to do, you know, messing with leveling and everything. Uh, the, really, the leveling in the game, I think, is one of the coolest things that's going on. You know, the fact that you can have cards that transform completely as the game goes on. Uh, and being able to play with cards like Krogius, you know, this little Sporling that turns into a giant unstoppable monster, or, you know, uh, Scorchmane Dragon, the, you know, starting with an egg and coming out as a giant fire-breathing dragon. It really helps to be playing Aloy and to pair with those to be able to get past the weak stages and uh, get to play their really powerful level 3 forms. Okay, yeah, so to sort of almost, uh, yeah, to ramp up, if you will, and, exactly, and to get yeah. there. The, 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 leveling, the leveling mechanic in, in Soulforge really lets you sort of get to the, the powerful dominant late game cards. Okay, very cool, very cool, and and fun to know. For all you out there looking for a quick tip, take it from a guy that knows, obviously we're talking to him. Um, all right, you're obviously long-term game player, uh, game designer, the whole bit. 
working with Soulforge, what mechanic or card has come through, whether you designed it or one of the other folks designed it, that's really struck you as just, like, I don't know, not maybe the best, but just the most inspired by because of what you can do with Soulforge with the dig the abilities with playing it digitally. I think just sort of what I was saying just now, you know, the, the leveling mechanic, not only does it provide us with the ability to have a, a game with uh, significant opportunity costs without a, a resource system. You know, in, in a lot of TCGs, you're forced to play with, you know, sort of basic boring resource cards because they're what you let you play your other cards. Whereas in Soulforge, because of the way that the level progression of uh, of the cards works, you can have cards that you know are really powerful early on, but really weak later. Really weak early on, but really powerful later. That are all are all able to exist in the same basic costing system, uh, which is just you know your your card for the turn or one of your cards for the turn. And the leveling system also lets us uh, really tell cool stories. Like one of the cards we just revealed um, on our uh, our weekly stream uh, just recently was a phoenix. That at, at level one, it's you know it's this fiery bird. Uh, and level two, it's a pile of ash. And at level three, it's you know this huge uh, powerful phoenix that when it dies goes back to a pile of ash. And whenever you level up, the pile of ash becomes the phoenix. So we can use the sort of leveling mechanism to tell all these really cool stories, not just you know sort of basic things of you know egg to whelp to dragon, but also you know really uh, a more complete sort of story of what's going on with a creature like a phoenix. Wow, okay. Well, yeah, no, that absolutely. And uh, of course, as you said, you know, you can't, you can't, just can't do that in a, a paper TCG. Oh yeah, I mean, when we were uh, when we were playtesting the game, sort of with a physical prototype, uh, it was pretty miserable because you know all of the all of the cards were slips of paper. There are three different slips of paper inside a sleeve with like you know a, a different card backing it. So you'd be playing the game and you play the level one version of a card. You'd pull out one slip of paper and put it into play. And then, you know, it levels up, you play the level two slip of paper, put it into play. At the end of the game, you just have slips of paper all over the table, have to put them all back in the right sleeves. It, it would, you'd very frequently just play a deck, and it's just really bad. You're like, yeah, I'm not going to bother putting this back in the sleeves because it's just so miserable. Oh, wow. I, I, I can't even imagine that kind of prototyping. That's, uh... So, yeah, we, uh, we don't want to subject people to that. Now, we have that all online. The computer does that for you. Yes, absolutely. And in a much prettier way. Definitely, so, definitely. Wow. <laughs> now, speaking of pretty, uh, you were kind enough to uh, send over some art our way. Yeah. Um, and that we can look at. So why don't I bring up... All right. Well, um, one last thing before we go. Uh, what can you tell us about the future of the OP side of the house? I mean, obviously, organized play is going to uh, push a lot of things for this game. Obviously, a good, robust OP program rules games. So what are, you know, now that we've been into it for a while, you guys have had a chance to really mess with it, what are the overall thoughts for OP that you know about? Yeah, uh, well, we, I mean, we definitely plan on having uh, both sort of traditional tournaments uh, that, you know, you have a number of players enter into a tournament, they compete, and someone is the winner. Uh, you know, as as most you know most TCGs tend to do. Uh, but one thing that we've we've talked about um, is wanting to support sort of a more sort of uh, continuous kind of gameplay. Uh, in terms of, you, you sort of think of it kind of like a like 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 league play, uh, but not 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 quite like that. It's basically a continuous sort of tournament that people can enter. Uh, it's something that we've we've sort of been thinking about doing. Because one of the things when you're when you're trying to play in a tournament, uh, say online, uh, it, one of the things that that is you know not so fun about it is waiting for other people. Mm -hmm. you know, if you go and play a tournament on some other you know online TCGs, you'll play and maybe you'll finish your round and then you're like, oh well, I have half an hour until anyone else is done. You know, I have to wait for everyone to be done in this round, so now I'm just sort of sitting around. Uh, but the the idea that we have is that rather than necessarily having just you know tournaments that people enter that have you know, a set number of players and then a winner, you can have tournaments that are basically ongoing that you can enter and you'll get paired with people who are also entered in the same type of tournament, but they could be people who you know, entered a week ago, people who entered an hour ago, you know, who, and you can just play whenever you're ready to play and it will keep pairing you with people who are you know, in the same type of event, uh, but you know, you're not necessarily at the same stage in the event as they are. You know, you're, just, you're just playing as someone who's also you know, decided to do the same thing. Interesting. <laughs> hmm. 
I, I that I, I will definitely be interested to see how that is done, sir. Because yeah, that we, uh, we have we have a lot of uh, a lot of thoughts that we've we've put into this, and uh, you know some of our programmers are particularly excited about this, and you know are are looking into uh, all the details of making it work. So you know this is something that we're we're really excited about because as you know as someone who you know has as you said played you know, TCGs forever, um, I, I one of the things that always discouraged me from playing uh, from playing online you know pretty frequently was you know, just the nature of just sitting there and not having anything to do while I'm waiting for my round. Like, if I'm at a real-life tournament, you know, I, I, you know, I can be hanging out with people. Uh, but one of the things that we think is particularly appealing about playing online is the fact that, you know, you can do it whenever you want. And, you know, you can, you can play between doing other things. Um, and, you know, I don't want to have to necessarily have, you know, two hours to be able to play in a tournament. It's like, I want to be able to play a round of my tournament now and maybe another one on my lunch break. Maybe another one, you know, when I get home from work or whatever. And we want to make that possible that people can have, you know, this sort of tournament experience uh, without necessarily having to, you know, have these big blocks of time and wait for people. Wow. All right. Well, hey, I definitely look forward to that because as someone that, yeah, has to break up his gaming into little chunks here and there, that definitely gives that ability to feel connected to the bigger picture while not having to go, okay, this Saturday, that's all I can do. Yeah, I mean, you know, when I was, when I was you know, in, in high school playing games or, or you know, when I was just playing games for a living for a while, I had a lot of time that I could set aside to do that. Uh, but sort of, you know, as as I've gotten older and you know gotten more responsibilities, and we know that there are a lot of gamers like us, you know, who can't necessarily set aside, you know, three hours to play in a tournament, but who want to be able to play competitively, and we want to be able to make that a reality for them by offering sort of a different kind of experience than just sort of, you know, hurry up and wait for your next round. Awesome. Awesome. I definitely, uh, I think the audience as a whole and myself look forward to that, yeah, uh, especially as I can then, uh, in the end, I can be there on my couch with my pad and I can just sling some cards and go, okay, I can come back in a couple hours. I don't have to mess with <laughs> I mean, it. I, I do have to say that one of our, one of our, uh, our uh, planned uh, scenes from our Kickstarter at one point was you know, a, a pan back of people sitting there playing just in their underwear on their couch. And we eventually cut it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to subject people to that. But you know the the fact that you could just play at home in whatever whatever state of of, of you know clothing or disrobing whatever whatever you want that's the goal it's, that's how how you know mobile and digital games should work <laughs> absolutely oh that's awesome and scary all at the same time <laughs> you Ladies never know when you're gonna be playing again. <laughs> right I'll just put this out there now. As an old married guy, if you ever play against Mozu Pro in a tournament <laughs> or an event for, for Soul Forge, I will have clothing on. I believe you. Unless I'm already in bed. And then <laughs> we just won't turn the cameras on. <laughs> All right. Well, Brian, obviously, thank you for taking the time and, and speaking with us today. Awesome news about Soul Forge. Uh, I know the audience and myself still looking forward to it, chomping at the bit. I know I've got to dedicate a little bit more time to get there on Steam and play some myself. Um, definitely look forward to it, and uh, also congrats on not only on all the info you guys gave out for Soul Forge this week, but also for the release of the latest patch for Ascension. I saw that for my iPhone. I've still got to download that, but uh, <laughs> looking forward to that. Getting my butt kicked in a whole new realm with new cards, because uh, I still haven't Always gotten good at that game. Oh, it is. It is. It, losing can be fun. Unfortunately, I prove it a lot in Ascension, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, but again, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this was our, our interview with Brian Kibler of Stumble Entertainment with Soul Forge. We thank you for uh, coming out and uh, watching us again this week. <laughs> Brian, again, thanks for joining us. And until next time, everybody, you have been on the Moser Report.